Welcome to my YouTube channel Bachelor and Master English. Today I am talking about uh, Riders to the Sea by John Millington Singh. Uh, this is uh, a modern one act play. Uh, it is a tragedy and we shall be talking about uh, its synopsis um, in Nepali and English, character sketch, theme and discussing this as a tragedy uh, and there will be title discussion and overview of the text uh, here are the characters the characters here are moria she is the title character and kathleen uh, nora bartley and other characters here there is also reference to the priest um, and the other fellows who have been to the fair with Bartley. So, uh, let's go with the summary of the play. E begins on the Aran Islands as Nora, a young woman, brings in a small bundle and tells her older sister, Kathleen, that they may be the clothes of their drowned brother Mikkel. A priest told her the body of a drowned man had been found, but they do not want their mother Moria to know. Mikkel has been missing for a week. The family has already lost the, um, the family patriarch as well as four other sons to the sea. They hide the bundle in the turf uh, left of the cottage. Moria is busy planning for Mikkel's funeral. Conjuned by her grief and lamenting that she has lost all her sons to the sea, she discusses the last remaining son Bartley uh, with her daughters. Bartley is planning to go to sea to sell the family horses. Nora and Kathleen think they need the money, but Moria is hoping that the priest will stop him due to the dangerous tires. Bartley enters the cottage uh, looking for rope. Moria tries to stop him, but he is determined to create a halter for the horses for his trip. Moria tries to dissuade him by showing him the preparations for Mikael's funeral, but he ignores her. Uh, he says goodbye to his sisters, but his mother refuses to go give him any blessings as he lives. This is significant as it is an Irish tradition that a son receives the blessing of his mother before he lives. Moria's daughters are shocked she broke this tradition. As Bartley lives uh, with the horses, Kathleen notices that he has taken no food and sends Moria after him to give him some food and blessings. She lives with uh, a stick from Mikkel lamenting over how the old people never leave anything behind their uh, the young people in the family as is customary. When Moray is gone, uh, her daughter uh, retrieves the bundle of clothes from the laptop check if they are from Mikkel. Nora observes her out stitching on the clothing and confirms that they are her brothers. They now know that their brother's body has been found and the priest has already buried him. Uh, the sisters hide the clothes again and they assume Moria will be in a better mood because she got the, the chance to bless Bartley. However, she comes back in a panic, saying she saw Mikkel upon a grey pony. She could not bless Bartley due to the shock. The girls try to calm her down by showing her Mikkel's claws and telling her that her son got a proper Christian burial. As she grieves, villagers come into the cottage carrying Bartley's body. And the pony Moria saw that she thought she saw Mikkel upon knocked Bartley into the sea where he drowned. Moria gets on her knees near Bartley's corpse and sprinkles him with holy water. She says she is re rejoined to her pet and can finally sleep at night. 
After all, the sea has claimed every man in her family and it can uh, take nothing more from her. The preparations for Michael's funeral will now be used for Barclays. Mm, the play ends with Maura praying that her husband, his father and her poor sons will rest in peace. The curtain falls on her prayer. यो शीर्षक राखिएको छ सागरमा हराउन पुगेकाहरु प्रति यो आयरल्यान्डका चर्चित नाटककार जो जोन मिलिंगटन सिंहको एक आधुनिक तर छोटो एकदम चर्चित कृति हो यहाँ एउटा मोरे भन्ने विधवा अशिक्षित र ज्यादै धर्मात्मा अनि एकदम सहनशील र साहसी महिलाको कथा नाटकीय रूप में प्रस्तुत करिए कुछ आप उन्हें छह छोटा छोरा रा दूसरा छोरी पाएगी अरे छोटा छोरा मधे चार वाला छोरा उनका सही समुद्र में हराई सकेगा तो दूसरा छोरा बांकी रागों में पनी अंत में यह दूसरी छोरा उन्हीं से साथ में रागो अवस्था रा उन्हीं छोरा बीन भागो अवस्था में सही उनको अवस्था कसरी दुईटा छन् क्याथलिन र नोरा अब क्याथलिन 20 वर्षकी छन् उनीहरु व्यवहारिक पनि छन् आमालाई धेरै कुरामा सघाउँछन् आमालाई चाहिँ सकेसम्म शान्त रहनले आमालाई चाहिँ बिलाउन गरी गरी चाहिँ अब घरी घरी बिलाउनै बिलाउन गरेर मर्न सक्ने सम्म अवस्था आउँछ भनेर उनीहरुले आमालाई धेरै कुराबाट बचाउन कोसिस गर्छन् एउटा चाहिँ विडम्बनापूर्ण अवस्था छ गरीब परिवारको अब चाहिँ जुन कमाइ खाने मान्छेहरु जुन छोराहरु मानिन्छ र बुढेस कालमा पनि वृद्ध आमालाई तिनी छोराहरुको सहारा भयो भने बाँच्ने एउटा आधार हुन्थ्यो तर ती सबै छोराहरु बितिसकेको हुनाले अब मौर्यलाई अब कसैसँग डराउने कुरो छैन जहाँ आशा हुन्छ त्यहाँ डर हुँदो रहेछ अब उनको आशै छैन आशा नभएपछि केको डर त्यो अब आफ्नो छोराहरु आफ्नो श्रीमान आफ्नो ससुरा सबै त्यही समुद्रमा चाहिँ सबै बितेका अब चाहिँ केही पनि नरहेको अवस्थामा अब उनी चाहिँ एउटा ये सब ये अब कुनी चिंता न माने करना अब क्यों होनी हो कसो होनी हो बने कुरा आकुल ब्याकुल होने न परी करना अंत में संजा आराम को निद्रा सुच्चु बने रह अब तो चाहे चीर निद्रा उनको चाहे वड़ा संधाई को लगी है निद्रा पनी होना सकता तो सांकेतिक रूप में तो ये पनी चाहे मौर्याले तो तो खाल को बाबा ले ये उटी विधवा महिला ला मुख्य पात्र के रूप में प्रस्तुत करी कौशली उनका परिवार का पुरुष जाति सभी सागर में गुवानु पुरे वन्य कथा बस्तु प्रस्तुत करी कुछ नाटक को कथा अनुसार मौर्य ले अपना बाँचे बच्चे खुचे का दुई भाई छोरा समुद्र में घुमाए को प्रसंग उजागर करी कुछ अपनों पति ससुरारा चार भाई छोरा � र परिवार धन्न आपले शक दो काम करते हैं मोरे संग दुई जाना छोरा मिकेल र बाटली पाकी चं अब मोरे सूती रे को बेला उनका दुई छोरी वाले अपनो दाई मिकेल समुद्र में डूबे को था पाऊं चं परंतु उन्हें र आमला त्यो रास्ते बताऊं देना अब घर में ये उटा मात्र छोरो बाटली पाकी रहन्छा कपड़ा क अब कैथलिन र नोरा ले त्यो कुरा लुक आऊँ सन र पची त्यो डोनी गल बड़ा ले आए को त्यो कपड़ा को पोको लुक आए को थार न पाए पनी आमा मोरे ले कांचू सोरो बाटली लाई आंधी आए को बहुत समुद्र तरफ न जाना बन्चिं सो त्यो समुद्र न तार न बन्चिं तर सपना में मोरे ले बाटली लगाए आर जाना गोड़ सवार युवारु उनको कांचू सरो बाटली को लास घर ले आएं चं, वो घोड़ा ले समुद्र में धकिलेर, खोयरो घोड़ा ले समुद्र में धकिलेर समुद्र को छाल ले बगायरा ले जाना सागर में डूबेर मारे को उन्चं, घर में उपस्थित महिलारो शोकगीत गुनगुना उसन, लास माथी पानी छरकीनो वंदा आगाडी मोरे ले, आपु डॉर वड़ा मुक्त अ उड़ा आस उन्हें हो तीनों रा आस उन्हें हो रा डॉर उन्हें हो अब आशा ही ना हो बसी क्या को डॉर अब उन्हें आशा मुक्त भाई को ले डॉर वाला मुक्त भाई से किसान रा उन्हें जैसे उड़ा 
लामो निद्रा लाम आराम को निद्रा सुत्ने पनि चाहना गरेकी छन् अब छोराहरु गुमाउनु परेको कारणले उनमा शोक र दुःख सहने क्षमता पलाएको छ त्यसैले उनले भन्छिन् हामी सर्वशक्तिमान ईश्वरले जे गर्छन् त्यो त्यसैमा चित्त बुझाउनु पर्छ किनकि कोही पनि चिरञ्जीवी छैन कोही पनि सदा पार सधै सधैको लागि बाँच्ने वाला छैन उनको दुःख पीडा सहन गर्ने क्षमता बुझ्न नसकेर नोराले भन्छिन् उनी बाटलेको मृत्युमा रोइनन् जति मिकेलको मृत्युमा रोएकी थिइन् आखिर उनका सबै सन्तान सकिएपछि कोखैरे उजाडिएपछि उनले रुनुमा के छ एन्ड दट्स द एन्ड अफ द समरी अफ द स्टोरी अफ द प्ले इन नेपाली हियर एन्ड यू ह्याभ द प्लट अफ राइडर्स टु द सी so this is a drama and here you have uh, in drama in every drama you have introduction uh, rising action climax uh, falling action and resolution or denouement so uh, you have nora arriving with a pile of clothes that is introduction of uh, the topic and rising action bartley lives without his mother's blessing Uh, More follows to say goodbye to Bartley. Nora and Kathleen realize Mikkel is dead. So these are the rising action. And climax. More thinks she sees Mikkel's ghost. That is the climax of the drama here. And uh, following action. Bartley's body is re- returned. And it is brought home. And finally resolution. More blesses Bartley's body and says goodbye. So that is uh, the plot of this drama here. And here we have a character of uh, Moria. Moria is the principal character. She is the protagonist of the play. And uh, she is illiterate peasant woman being given the leading role in this tragedy. She has little knowledge of the world but is capable of taking decisive action in time. She is deeply religious and a loving mother. She is a grief-striken widow. because uh, she has been losing all her family members and relatives time and again and uh, she is grief stricken there is no time there is no hour there is no moment of uh, uh, happiness in her life and uh, this lady is superstitious uh, in her activities and in her thinking she has become the victim of fate and nature She keeps on talking about the same thing time and again and her daughters uh, try to prevent her from talking that. Uh, they try to console her, they try to convince her, but she keeps on talking about the same thing. And she is a brave and courageous woman who struggles against powerful forces such as nature, harsh elements and unfortunate circumstances. And this principal character of this play is very much devoted to God and religion. So, We have other characters here in the play too. Uh, they are Bartley and Kathleen. So Bartley, uh, he is a hard working person. He is determined to be family soul and he wants to do the, or undertake the responsibility. He is concerned about uh, every day of here. He possesses masculine character. He is dominant here and he has that feeling as well. He knows he risks death and shows his readiness as subject to fate. Uh, so he is not afraid of uh, going to see. Um, he has seen and he has heard, he has uh, witnessed everything that has happened in his life. All the members, all the male members of his family have become the subject of death in the sea. And uh, he doesn't fear that. He is, he is the victim of changing economic condition in the island. That is Bartley. And Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen is a um, 20 year old young girl. She is a mature girl. She is practical and caring um, in her family. Despite being superstitious, she takes charge to bridge the gap between old and new generations. There is a gap. She bears her mother's pain of loss as well as her own. And she is pure and practically in action which is a great necessity when living with someone uh, like more so someone uh, living with someone like more is not easy so she is practical she has to become pure in this sense and the theme here riders to the sea is a drama that concerns suffering on many levels a mother faces the loss of six sons to the sea 
the two daughters must bear their mother's pain of loss um, as well as their own. The last surviving brother knows that he risks death because out of extreme necessity he works against an angry sea. The strongest theme in Riders to the Sea is the conflict between religion, superstition and nature. There is a deep uh, religious theme in the play as well, informed by Ireland's Roman Catholic tradition. The most important thing to Moria is uh, the return of Michael's body so he can have a proper Catholic funeral. Uh, when Bartley's body is returned, she blesses it with woolly water. Uh, throughout the play, the characters pray to God and ask for blessings. The power of the sea, uh, the sin is the central theme of the text. The sea is right outside the cottage door, volatile, unpredictable and implacable. It has taken almost all of Moria's male family members and is poised to take the rest of them as well. The play presents a curious blend of Christian beliefs and pagan superstitions. Uh, certain superstitions appear in the play. Some pigeons believe that the dead could control the lives of the living. Another theme em emerging from the play concerns the struggle of the individual against society. The islanders were originally a self-subsisting people. They farmed, fished, and wove and knitted their own clothes. Fatalism is another theme of the play. Uh, the characters of the play are at all times in contact with uh, and accepting of the reality of death, the sea and drowning especially being a constant threat. They are caught between the dual uh, realities of the sea as uh, a source of livelihood and a fatal threat. Another theme, main theme of the play is the tension between the traditional and modern worlds in Ireland at the time. Moore is representative of the older Irish generation. She is immovably tied to the traditional world and inward looking. On the other hand, Nora represents the younger generation. She is willing to change with the outside world and therefore outward looking. Kathleen, the eldest daughter, struggles to bridge these two worlds and hold both balance. Okay, so um, here is the discussion regarding this uh, play as a modern tragedy. So these are the characteristics of tragedy here and how far uh, this play goes with tragedy. In view of the characteristics of tragedy above, Riders to the Sea may rightly take its place as the greatest modern tragedy in the English language. Uh, it focuses on the grieving Irish woman Moria who has lost her husband and five of her sons to the sea. Uh, when she gets or that one of her son's bodies may have been found, it sets forth in motion a chain of events uh, that lead to for the tragedy for the old widow and her surviving children. It celebrates uh, the hardiness of Irish people and its central conflict is that of man against nature. There is no human antagonist. The primary antagonist is the impersonal cruelty that takes uh, away uh, family members and this Riders to the Sea is regarded by many people as the greatest tragedy in one act of modern times. It is unique in being a modern tragedy in one act but it differs from tragedies like Oedipus Rex or King Lear or Hamlet. In classical literature, um, the tragic hero is the victim of fate ordained by the gods who require him expired ancestral sins resulting in a tribal curse. In Renaissance literature, uh, the tragic hero is the victim of a flaw or defect in his own nature, for which uh, he has to suffer and die before attaining a redemption through death and eventually um, salvation. Neither this Christian view, uh, not the earlier pagan attitude to tragedy, uh, is in accord with the scientific spirit of modern times. Indeed, since the 17th century, uh, not many plays have been written which scholars considered to be true tragedies. Uh, Riders to the Sea has become 
one of the remarkable works in modern literature. Moria is the protagonist uh, in the play and uh, she is unquestionably a tragic figure in the play. She is not living under a tribal curse, nor is her suffering due to any weakness or flaw in her own nature. At her strict endurance of the misfortune brought about by the loss of her all her sons is heroic and tragic. At the time when the play was written, many people identified Moria with her country, Ireland, which had been losing its sons as a result of war, famine, uh, uh, and disease. But today, uh, we see it more as a play relevant to all humanity. In all times and all countries, we can find uh, the poor and dispossessed whose cries echo those of Moria in this play. So this is a uh, discussion of the play as a tragedy here. And uh, let's see the title, justification of the title. The title, Riders to the Sea, references the protagonist Moray's last two of six sons, Michael and Bartley, who both lose their lives to the sea. The play documents that Moray has in fact lost to the sea all the male members of her family, including her husband, her father-in-law and five other sons. The play focuses on the grieving Irish woman Moray who is not living under a tribal curse nor is her suffering due to any weakness or flaw in her own nature. She is the victim of nature. She is the victim of fate. When she gets old that one of her son's bodies may have been found, it sets into motion a chain of events that lead to further tragedy of the world, a grief-striking widow and her surviving children. And the title and the subject matter relate uh, to the theme and this title is apt and justifiable. Okay and uh, the overview. In this overview of the play, there will be short summary and short discussion here. And uh, let's see. After nine days of constant grieving for her missing son, Mikkel, who she feels certain has been drowned, old Moray has fallen into a pitiful sleep. Her daughter, Kathleen, is busy with household tasks. And another daughter, Nora, slips quietly into the kitchen with a bundle given by the young priest. It contains part of the clothes taken from the body of a drowned man um, far in the north. They have been sent to Moria's cottage with a view to possible identification. Nora brings her sister a bundle of clothes taken of um, a drowned man in Donegal and they wonder whether they belong to their brother Mikkel uh, missing at sea. They hide the bundle from their mother, Maura, who is suffering a terrible premonition and begs her, her youngest son, Bartley, not to cross the sea in a storm to a horse pier on the mainland. Alone again, the sisters unwrap the bundle and find that Mikkel, like his father, grandfather, and four brothers before him, has been taken by the sea. Maura has had a vision of eight riders to the sea, all her men, including Bartley, heading to their deaths. Her last son Bartley is carried in. He was thrown from his horse and drowned in the webs. The women begin their caning. Well, Moria reflects that the sea can now uh, harm her no more. Thank you very much for being with me. Have a nice time.